For too long I have railed against the HTML5 backend for libgdx. It's buggy, it's slow, it doesn't work. I am here right now to confess my sins. HTML5 GWT is the best way to distribute your game to your audience. In truth, I let my ignorance blind me. There is no other distribution scheme that lets you reach Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, and iOS users all in one go without needing Java installed. It's not always easy to get started though. Let's remove the one barrier to entry that gets me every time, the documentation. You'll find an updated article in the description below, written by GWT experts Tommy Edinger and Mr. Stalfelch. I, for one, am truly grateful to the LibGDX Discord community for teaching me everything I need to know about the Google Web Toolkit. GWT is a compiler that transforms your Java source code into JavaScript that your web browser can understand. Remember, it transforms Java source code, not byte code. It's not compatible with Kotlin. Take a look. It's super simple to make an HTML project. Easy, right? Now to let our users play the ugly default game, we need to go to our Gradle tab and run the HTML dist command. What this does is take our Java code and transforms it into JavaScript to be run in your web browser. This process is very time consuming and nothing short of black magic. A few minutes later and we can look into our project's HTML folder. Build dist. Okay, I'm going to open this index.html file. It looks like it's loading, but to be honest, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. It's not going to work this way. You have to upload it to a server if you want to test it. Fear not. There are a few places that will host your game for free. I'm going to upload to itch for example. Zip all these files up and upload with the proper settings. If all things go well, we should be able to play in our browser. Okay, okay, I hear you. This is too much crap to go through just to test your game. True, you need to be able to test your game locally and right away. I can tell you how to set up XAMPP to start a local Apache server and how to copy your dist files to the htdocs folder. It would only be a matter of typing localhost in the address bar, but maybe that's too many steps. Dist is certainly too slow for testing incremental changes. There is a better way, rest assured. Superdev is the way to go. Check it out. Run HTML Superdev. This is already faster than dist. What's happened is that we started a local HTTP server that will serve up our code. If we click this link, we get this friendly page. Copy these bookmarks to your bookmark bar. Great. Now let's play the game. Nope, that's not the game. Hmm. Let's go back to idea. Ah, this must be the game. What? The sad truth is that the devs have done a terrible job of telling you how to proceed. Most of us will have to go to localhost 8080 index.html to bring up the game. Older builds will need to go to localhost 8080 HTML. Make sure to use the Chrome browser for maximum success. It's necessary for debugging to work. Other browsers are not optimized to use it. You can test your game here, sure. But let's say, we're no longer pleased with this red. It offends me. I'll change it in the core project. How do I update the HTML game? Don't run SuperDev again, it's already running in the background. Go back to your game and click the refresh button. If you don't have that, you can click the bookmark, Dev Mode On, to bring up the same menu. Click 
click Compile. Presto, change up. This gives us another advantage. We can now debug the HTML version of our game. Press F12 with the game's page open. Click on Sources and press Ctrl P. Type in the name of the file you want to debug. You can set breakpoints by clicking the margin on the left. This is pretty much the best way to debug if you have a problem in HTML5 that doesn't happen on desktop mode. You can actually run full screen mode for your web games by the way, and very easily too. All you have to do is call the same code that you would call on desktop. Very convenient. It even works on mobile. There is one caveat though. There is an option in the HTML launcher to set your game to automatically resize to fit the window. Just comment out these lines and uncomment these. This messes with full screen though, so we'll have to copy over the corrected method from the wiki. Don't forget to set the full screen orientation via the getconfig method. Speaking of mobile, how are you going to test on your phone? You can get your super dev build to work on your devices too. Make sure to open the port on your computer's firewall, connect to your local network, then browse to your development computer's IP address. It works. This whole time we've been testing this game, we've been staring at this libgdx progress bar. I love libgdx, you love libgdx. We're in agreement. Fantastic. But to me, having the default logo seems a little amateur. It screams newbie, like all those Unity games with that big brand advertisement at the beginning. There's a solution. Just copy paste the code from the wiki page. Then save an image in the web app folder with the appropriate name. This will be the loading logo for your disk build. Do the same for the war folder and you'll have the image in your super dev build as well. Modify the image and colors for the theme that you're going for. Now, while we're messing around with the HTML files, let's take a closer look at the index.html file in the web app folder. See this tag here? That's the refresh button we see when we run the game. Let's delete that because we don't want that to show up in our production. Down in the script block, you have some functions blocking mouse clicks from doing their default behavior. That's important because we don't want the right click menu to pop up when we're playing. But what about keyboard keys? Pressing arrow keys usually pans the page, but maybe we want it to move the player instead. Let's copy paste again from the wiki page. You need to do this for every key that normally has a browser function. You want to block F1 from opening the help screen? You have to type the JavaScript key code in this list. Use keycode.info to reveal these key values. The exception to this is the space key, which has some unique rules. That goes into on key press instead of on key down. No problems. So let's dip into the depressing side of GWT games. GWT does not support reflection in the typical sense. If you don't know what reflection is, outstanding. Let's keep it that way. You should avoid unnecessary reflection as much as possible. But things like the skin loader and pools depend on it. And yet they still work in GWT. That's because of the crazy genius hacks from the GDX developers. 
So you need to make sure to use libgdx classes instead of the standard Java reflection classes. You'll also need to add some details to the GWT XML files. There's a whole article on this, so I'll spare you the details. One thing to note is that reflection on GWT comes at a cost. You cannot add reflection to all of your classes because it will eventually reach a hard limit. Take care in what you decide to include. Gradle might already be intimidating for some, but throw GWT into the mix and it can get pretty hairy. The libraries that you depend on need to be GWT compatible. Remember what I was talking about with reflection? That's just one of the many things that can disqualify a lib from being compatible with your HTML game. Thankfully, your favorite libgdx libraries have already made this consideration. Take Typing Label, for example. The GitHub page gives you clear instructions to make it work for us. It requires us to add the source code to the HTML project and add a line to the GDX definition GWT XML. Not too bad, right? The main complaint about developing for HTML5, besides all this extra crap, is that it's slow. Sure, it takes a long time for disk to compile. We already solved that with SuperDev. But did you know that games running in SuperDev actually perform slower? I'm saying less frames per second. So you have to come to a balance. Performance versus build time. Maybe you should run a dist every now and then to see how it really works in the wild. This will also reveal rare bugs that don't show up in SuperDev. Overall, you can't beat the performance of a desktop app. But GWT works pretty fast considering all the stuff that is going on under the hood. Did you know that JavaScript doesn't have long values? Every number is represented by a float. You can still use integers and longs, just consider they may result in some inconsistent behavior across platforms because of the way they are emulated. The details are on the wiki page once again. Another thing is that you're not able to read or save to files directly on your player's computer. You can read anything you've packed internally just fine, but in order to save anything, you have to use libgdx's preferences. There is a limit to what you can save. Perhaps you should consider using GDX game services to save your data to the cloud. So there you have it. I feel I've only scratched the surface of this subject, but I think that's enough to avoid the common pitfalls of the HTML5 backend. Perhaps you'll choose this path for your next jam game. Your users are more likely to pick up and play a browser game before they download some strange exe file. Easier for them? Pain in the ass for us. But I feel it's worth it. Because damn, a good working web app is just so slick. Good luck and good fortune, my friends. Is that you, Unity? Is this me? Who said that? Who the f said that? Who's the slimy little Unity sh twinkle toed sh down here who just signed his own death warrant? Nobody, huh? The fairy godmother said it. Out standing. I will pee to you all until you f die. I'll pee to you until your f are sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little? F Huh? Sir, no, sir! You little piece of shit. You look like a worm! I bet it was you! Sir, no, sir! Sir, I said it, sir! Well, no sh What have we got here? A f***ing comedian? Private Joker! I admire your honesty! Hell, I like you! You can come over to my house and f*** my sister! <gasps> you little scumbag! I've got your name! I've got your a you will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn GDX by the numbers. I will teach you. Now get up. Get on your feet. You had best unf*** yourself or I will unscrew your head and down your neck.